Until last video of this course, we were discussing how to work with Excel Automation Database, UI, and Web Services. In the last video, we also saw how to consume the Excel Automation Web Service in the console application of Visual Studio and insert a data and create a test cycle using the Visual Studio console application. And in this video, we will be discussing how to insert a record or a test result into the errors database and view that database result in the Excel Automation Reporting Systems UI. So in order for that to be done, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a few changes in our existing Excel Automation framework. If you have already purchased the course Automation Framework Development with Selenium C Sharp Advanced Course or the Automation Framework Development with Code UI Test 2015, then it will be very, very easy for you to follow the rest of this particular course, at least until the insertion of record into the Excel Automation Reporting Database so that you can view the result into the Excel Automation Reporting UI. So what we're going to do is we are going to start working with at least for this particular video to insert a record from the Excel Automation Framework. So we have already written the Excel Automation Framework in both of these courses and they are completely different because this is using Visual Studio Code UI and this course is using Selenium. So these are two different technologies but still the underlying code behind is going to be C Sharp and most of our framework code are going to be little bit same and the database helper that we have written already for both of these courses are pretty much same. That's why it is very easy for me to easily modify the existing code base for both of these framework. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to work with the automation framework development with Selenium C Sharp course framework, which is nothing but our EA framework or Exit Auto framework. This is the framework. EA Auto Framework and this is the EA Employee Test Application. So if you have already watched any one of the course, then it will be very easy for you to follow up at least to insert the data into the Excel Automation Reporting Database. Alright, so how the application looks like, we already know the Excel Automation Employee App is going to look something like this. The Automation Testing works to automate this particular application, right? So we don't have any reporting of this particular application test yet, just it was a pickle report. But now what we're going to do is we are extending a little bit to insert the data directly into the reporting database of Exit Automation Reporting System, right? So in order for that to be done, the very, very easy code behind that I'm going to add for our framework is going to be this file, the hook initialize.cs file. And before working with this particular code, the first and foremost thing which we need to do is to add a service reference for our Exit Automation web service that we developed in our previous video. Remember for the console application that we developed, we also reference the service reference. The same thing I'm going to do right here as well. So I'm going to add a service reference and then I'm going to give a name for our web service. So in our previous video, we just hit the discover button and it automatically brought us the service one. And the reason is because the project already had the web service within the same solution. And that's why the discover button worked well. But if you hit the discover right now, you will see there will be no service found in the solution, right? So what I'm going to do is I should ensure that I know the service URL. So if you click this IS Express, you can see there is something called as error service and errors reporting service UI running. So we are interested in this one, errors service. So you can see that we have localhost colon 22529. So if I open this, you can see that we have something like this. And if I click this service1.svc, this is what we are actually interested in. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this URL and then I'm going to paste it right here. And now if I hit go, you can see that we'll again see the service one. And if I expand this and if I click this, you can see create a cycle and write test result method, right? This is what we are pretty much interested in as we did in our previous video. So all I'm going to do is this. I'm going to give a name for our service, which is nothing but service. And then I'm going to hit OK. So this will add a service reference for our Exit Automation Web Service 
into our EA employee test project. So as you please note that we are adding the service reference only in the EA employee test project, not in EA out of framework. So we are not modifying any code in our framework side. All we are modifying is this EA employee test project, right? So the only modification which we are going to do is only in this hook initialize. So the modification which we are going to do in this particular hook initialize.cs are this. The first thing we need to do is add the service reference that we did right now. And then we need to create a constructor in the hook initialize as this particular code snippet as you can see here. So this service client is nothing but the service client we just referenced. So if you hit control dot, you can see it is asking you that using EA employee test dot service. So let's add the reference. All right. So we have just created a constructor and we have initialized this particular stuff, right? And then once it is done, then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove these guys, the test initialize, initialize setting, navigate site. I'm just going to move them all at least for now from initialize setting all these stuffs to another piece of code which is going to be before test run and then I'm going to just say public void before or maybe test initialize and then I'm going to paste this particular piece of code so this test initialize will take care of everything and we have something like hook initialize which I completely don't want I'll just remove this completely we also have to open or create a test cycle ID right so for doing that what I'm going to do client is equal to I'm just gonna say new service client and you'll understand why I, again I'm creating a object for the new service client again I'm creating the instance for new service client it's because while your test starts it will not go to the constructor the hook initialize first time it will actually call this particular before test run without even going to the constructor right so just gonna call that and then we are going to write something like create test cycle and within this create test cycle we can add our application under test name which is nothing but our employee app and executed by Karthik and requested by is going to be Sam and then the build number is I guess it is 1.0 and the app version is also 1.0 and the machine name so which is nothing but Windows 10 alright so this will create a test cycle ID for me and the last thing which we need to do is to insert the test result into the database I'm gonna copy this piece of code so I'm just gonna copy this and then I'm gonna paste it right here and you will see we will get some kind of errors here for the step contest and the reason for the error is because currently we are using specflow version as 1.9 but we need to have a spec flow version at least 2.1 and above. So we will discuss about that in the next video. Thank you. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to upgrade the spec flow from 1.9 to 2.1. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to the manage NuGet package. And here there is something called updates. So you can see that our spec flow has got some update and you can see the latest version is 2.1. So I'm just going to update the spec flow with 2.1. All right. It is done let's close this and now hopefully if I see this error is gone right which is good so now let me try to build the solution everything looks okay it is also a good practice that if you modify anything in the EA employee test project you also modify the same in the EA auto framework as well because this version of spec flow is also 1.9 so let's go to the manage NuGet package go to the updates and modify the spec flow to 1. Point, from 1.9 to 2.1 so I'm gonna update that as well alright great I'm just gonna do 
this execution to perform the operation. So what is this piece of code actually doing? You can see that we are getting the step name using the scenario contest dot current dot step contest dot step info dot text. So this is going to give you the step name for me. And this guy, the feature contest dot current dot feature info dot title is going to give the feature name for me. And this scenario name is going to give the scenario name, the scenario info dot title. So if the scenario contest dot current dot test error is not equal to null, which means if there is any exception or errors, then it is going to write that right here using this particular property scenario contest dot current dot test error dot stack trace. And if there is no error, then it's going to say passed. Super easy, right? And you can see that I'm writing everything within after step. And the reason is because if your test executes, then only after the step, it is going to return, write the result for you within your test database. So this is the only modification which I'm going to do in my EA auto framework. And you can see that all the magics will happen to insert the record into my execute automation reporting system. Very, very fast and fluid, right? So let's try to execute the test and see how things works. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to build the solution and let's go to the test explorer. It seems like everything's okay. So I'm going to run a very, very small feature this time. Let's say check login with correct username and password. So let's right click and run the selected test. Oops, we got an error. And it says that the test initialize should be static. Hmm. Oh, all right. So this should be static. The test initialize method should be static. And if this is made as static, then you need to make this as static as well. So I'm gonna save this and let me try to run the selected test. All right, it opened the browser. So, all right, super fast. It executed the test and you can see that we now should have a run of employee app Karthik Sam 1.0, 1.0, Windows 10 in our test cycle ID. So let's hop over here and you can see that last time we executed, we don't have the exit automation employee result. So I'm just gonna refresh it. And you can see that it has created a employee app, Karthik, Sam, Ono, 1.0 and 1.0 for the application version. So if I click this 123, cool, right? You can see that it is actually showing you the login information. So it's saying that the feature name is login. The scenario name is login with correct password. And the step name is, I click the login, passed. I click the login link. I enter the username and password. I navigated to the application and see the application opened. I should see the username with hello. So everything looks good except this throttle steps is 12. Maybe it's kind of bug. We have to fix it. But the total idea here is using a very, very super cool code change just to add two lines of code right here will do a lot of stuff for you to insert the record and creating a test cycle ID. And the very neat idea of inserting a record or after running the test is using this after step. And if you want to see a failure result, what we can do, let's go to the login button, F12. And it says that when I click the login button, right? So maybe I intentionally make some change here in the BTN login. So let's say instead of input.btn, I'm just gonna change to btns. I'm gonna save it. And let's try to run this test and see how it works. This time we will get an exception and we also expect that exception should be recorded in our exit automation reporting system. And also it should show us the exception in a red color, like a failure. And you can see that the test has got failed saying no such element exception. And now if we go to the exit automation reporting system homepage, we have 124, there we go. So it says when I click the login button, I'm getting this exception. And how is this coming in the first? And you can see that this particular step, I click login button. Let's copy this and we'll see where the failure has actually happened. When I click, then I click the login button. 
error could not find the element exception and that's where the exception has happened and that's why you are seeing an exception right here and you can also see that if there is anything failed then the particular step will be displayed on the top so that it will be in a clear notice without any problem. So this is how you can make use of our Exit Automation reporting system, Exit Automation database to perform the data insertion into the reporting server and also view that using the Exit Automation reporting system UI. So the only change is this, right? So that's it guys. Thank you once again for watching this video and have a great day.